Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. In this video, we're going to look at logarithmic functions. Now, in the last uh, lecture, we looked at exponential functions. So let's review an exponential function. Here we have y equals 2 to the x, where we have a base of 2, that constant factor, being raised to some power. And if we recall, exponential equations pass through the point 0, 1 if there's no translations. And the reason why that is is because anything to the 0 power is 1. So 2 to the 0 power is 1. And we see it has an increasing uh, behavior here because it's an exponential growth because our value b is greater than 1. Well, what would happen if I wanted to find its inverse? If you recall, and you can see in this graph here, I plotted y equals x, which is the identity function. And any inverse has a graph that is a reflection through y equals x. So we see in this orange one here, we see this graph. This is a logarithmic function. And it is the inverse of this one. And we can see we know inverses is where we exchange y with x. So instead of having a y-intercept of 0, 1, we have an inter x-intercept of 1, 0. So it's inverse. We just exchange those values. So what is the function that represents this graph? Well, if we exchange x and y, that's how we learned how to find the inverse function. If I do that, I'd say, well, this y becomes an x, and this x becomes a y. And if you recall, when we, after we did that step to find an inverse, we would solve to, for y. How would I solve for y? I have to ask the question, to what power do I raise 2 to get x? To what power? Well, in the 1600s, mathematicians had developed a way to undo exponents. And they called them logarithms. And they used this symbol, log of some base of an argument equals a value. This is the inverse of something of this nature, where the base, in this case, the value would be log base 2, because that's my base. The argument is going to be our x value. And what it equals is the power. It gives me the power that I would have to raise 2 to get the argument back. So this is essentially our function, log base 2 of x. And we'll explore this in more detail. But this is the general form, log of some base of an argument equals the power. Logarithms tell us what the powers are. Well, um, in this example, we plug in the power to find out what the argument is. So we're going to explore this graph a little bit more. And if we move over here to look at this general equation, y equals log of some base b of an argument x. So y equals log base b of x. One thing we have to uh, recall is with exponential functions, they had certain behaviors. Well, logarithmic functions have very similar behaviors as well. Our base has to be greater than 0. That held true with exponents. The base couldn't be 1. Recall with exponential functions, our base couldn't be 1 because it would neither grow nor decay. Because 1 to any power is still 1. So it's not increasing or decreasing. Here, however, is where a logarithm is a little bit different. x is greater than 0. If we recall in an exponential equation, its range said y was always greater than 0. It was always above the x-axis if there wasn't any transformation. Well, since a logarithm is an inverse, and an inverse is a replacement of x's and y's, instead of y being greater than 0, the inverse function of a logarithm, x here, has to be greater than 0. And if we look at the example we had here, our b value was greater than 1. Well, our b value was actually a 2. So it is greater than 1. So we have an increasing logarithmic function. Just like we had an exponential function that was increasing. They have that same behavior. Well, what about a function that's decreasing? Let's take a look at this uh, exponential function and its inverse. 
this logarithmic function. And we'll see that they have very similar behaviors. In this case, b is still greater than 0 for both my exponential and logarithmic functions. We also see that b is not equal to 1. 1 half is not equal to 1. For the logarithm, x is greater than 0. It never drops below or to the left of the y-axis. That also tells me that this is not going to have a y-intercept. Just like this will never drop below the x-axis, it'll never have an x-intercept. So x has to be greater than 0. All the values of x, its domain, have to be to the right of 0. And for this particular example, the value of b is between 0 and 1. If our base is 1 half, we would have a decreasing or an exponential decay function. Well, if our base of our logarithm is between 0 and 1, it's going to be decreasing logarithmic function. And as we can see through y equals x, what's above the line here of y equals x is reflected here and vice versa. What's over here is reflected down there. They are reflections through y equals x, the identity function. Because if I flip those, it's still y equals x. So let's look at domain and range of logarithmic functions. If we have a function and it's equal to some logarithm of some base of some argument, they have similar behaviors. The domain of this value, well, we know logarithms cannot be negative. We can't have arguments that are negative or input values that are negative because it doesn't cross the y-axis. So what doesn't cross the y-axis is values of x from 0 to positive infinity. If we look at the range, well, we can look at this graph. And we can see the orange here is our logarithmic. This looks like it continues up to infinity, and it does. And this decreases ever so slightly forever and ever to negative infinity in the y. Range is about our y values. So it goes both up and down. So from negative infinity to infinity is our range. And if we recall with exponential, it was the other way around. Our domain was all real, and our range was from 0 to infinity. What about the x-intercept? <clears throat> An interesting thing about logarithms is that they have that similar behavior of exponents. If we recall an exponent always passed, an exponential function always passed through the point 0, 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1, a similar thing happens with a logarithm. Because it's an inverse, the log of 1 is always 0. It's inverse. So the x-intercept is when y is 0. In this case, when y is 0, x is 1. And we saw that in the graph. This point right here is 1, 0. And for the exponential, it was 0, 1. So we can see that inverse point for their intercepts. And lastly, the y-intercept, well, if the domain is never equal to 0 or less, it never crosses the y-axis. So if it never crosses the y-axis, there is going to be none for y-intercepts. There are no y-intercepts. So hopefully, after seeing exponential functions and then seeing logarithmic functions, we can make that connection of the inverse of every aspect of them between the exponential graph and the logarithmic graph. So hopefully, we make that connection. If not, you can always go back and review the videos. All right, so let's look at a general exponential equation here. I have a base raised to a power. It's equal to some argument. And that's what we call what it's equal to is an argument. So a base to a power equals the argument. Now, if I take its inverse, this is what I end up with. And we're just kind of briefly looking at a logarithm. We're introducing this logarithm. Well, <clears throat> this value is still the base. The log of a base of an argument is a power. So let's see why this is true. Well, if these are inverse equations, x is my power. Well, in its inverse, I have to replace x with y. So if x is the power for this equation, then y would be the power for this equation. If 
The argument is my y value. Its inverse would say x has to be the argument. We replace x's with y's. Now notice the base never changes. The base b is the base b. The base is what our reference for this exponent or this logarithm. It is the constant factor in which makes these exponential growth or exponential decay or logarithmic growth or logarithmic decay. So we can actually use this tool of inverses to help solve equations. So let's look at this example. Here we have 10 squared equals 100. Hopefully, we recognize that to be a true statement. But right now, this is in exponential form. My base is 10, my power is 2, and my argument is 100. Well, what if I wrote this as a logarithm? Well, if I write this as a logarithm, I just have to ch change its order. The base is 10, so I would take log base 10 of, instead of the power here, I want to put in the argument. Because logarithms tell us what the power is. This entire logarithm tells me what the power is. This entire logarithm is going to be equal to the power. So what does a logarithm ask? It asks, to what power do I raise 10 to get 100? It would be equal to 2. The power is 2. If we look at this one here, the first thing I want to do is identify the base. The base is 8, so I'm going to rewrite this to a logarithmic equation, log base 8, of the argument, which is 1 64th. And sometimes we like to put parentheses around them to, so we can look at where we're actually placing it. Logarithms are equal to the power. Well, the power is negative 2. So to what power do I raise 8 to get 1 64th? The answer would be negative 2. If I simplify this, well, the reciprocal of 8 to the second would be 1 over 8 squared, which is, in fact, 1 64th. So this is a true statement, which means this must be a true statement, and it is. Let's look at this one here. I identify my base to be 3. That's what's being raised to a power. So I write log base 3. Of the argument of 27 equals the power. Well, the power is x. And if I can solve this, I ask myself, 3 to what power is 27? Well, 3 to the third power is 27, so I've just solved for x. x equals 3. We actually are able to solve this logarithmic uh, equation here. Here, we have e to the t equals 82. Well, e is something we're going to explore in the next section, which is the natural number. And it's just a number very similar to pi. Pi is just an irrational number. We're all familiar with it. Hopefully, we recall pi to at least three significant figures, 3.14. Well, this is e. This is 2.1828, something like that, so 2.718. But anyways, this is just a symbol that we use to represent that number. But I can still change this into a logarithmic equation. Maybe it's something I can use a tool to uh, solve for this. So my base I identify as e, log base e, of the argument 82 equals the power. Well, the power here is t. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is one where you could actually use a calculator. You have this ability on your calculator. Log base e is a little button that says ln. Because this number, just like pi, that irrational number, is called the natural number. This is the natural log button on many calculators. Uh, it was developed in French by ma mathematicians there. So it's actually log natural, ln instead of nl. But hopefully we. We'll see more of this in the next section. So stay tuned for that. What I have here is an example for you to try. I want you to write this exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. Try that one for yourself. Um, you're not going to be able to solve for it, but you can write it as a logarithmic equation. We can also write logarithmic equations to to their inverse of exponential equations. Because maybe in some exponential form, we'll be able to solve it easily. So we're, gonna, we're going to rewrite these in exponential form and then attempt to solve them. <clears throat> Here I have log base 49 of 7 equals x. 
And I know that the base is 49, so I'm going to write that base. And in an exponent, this is the power. And the argument is 7. So base, power, argument. Base, power, argument. Hopefully, we're, uh, through repetition, we're getting that down. So 49 to what power is 7? Well, I know that the square root of 49 is 7. 49 is a perfect square. So how, what kind of power would give me a square root? Hopefully, we recall that that is a rational power or a rational exponent, 49 to the 1 half equals 7. So we just solve for x. If 49 to the x is 7, 49 to the 1 half is 7, x equals 1 half. We were able to solve that. If we look at this, well, maybe we can solve for x as the argument here if we write it in exponential form. So the first thing I do is identify the base. The base is 3. Logarithms are equal to powers, so that's my power. Negative 3 equals the argument of x. Now, I can solve for x simply by doing this math. Simplify this. 3 to the negative third, well, a negative exponent says take its reciprocal. So I'd have 1 over 3 cubed. And 3 cubed is 27. So I have 1 over 27. So hopefully we see how we get that. We just simplify using our rules of exponents. Here is an interesting one that is actually a very common rule of logarithms. And it's also a rule of exponents. If I identify my base to be 5 and my power to be x, my argument to be 1, hopefully we know the answer to this. 5 to what power equals 1? Well, any base to a particular exponent is 1, 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So by maybe seeing it this way, whenever we have a base uh, to a power equal to 1, that power must be 0 because anything to the 0 power is 1, one of our rules of exponents. That is also a rule of logarithms. The log of any base of 1 will always be 0. So x equals 0. 5 to the 0 is 1. That's a true statement. Here we have <coughs> log base 81 of x equals 1 fourth. Well, if I'm going to rewrite this, I identify the base to be 81. Logarithms are equal to powers. Its power is 1 fourth. The argument is x. 81 to the 1 fourth. Hopefully we recall rational exponents. This just means the fourth root. 81 is a perfect fourth power number, 3. So 81 to the 1 fourth equals 3. x equals 3. All right. <clears throat> A couple more examples, and then we're going to have you try some of your own. Here we have log base 4 of 4 cubed. If we write this in exponential form, 4 is my base, 3 is my power, 4 to the third is the argument. Well, if we look at what we have here, it doesn't get any more true than 4 cubed equals 4 cubed. It is what it is. So this is just by simplifying. And this is actually a rule of logarithms as well. If their bases are the same, it reduces to 1. One of those powers is equal to the 1 power that it's equal to. So 3 equals 3. That, too, is a true statement. It is what it is. Let's look at this one here. If we rewrite this, and it's very similar to the last one, in exponential form, 2 is my base x is my power. The square root of 2 is the argument. Well, here we look at this. We see they, their bases are the same. This is 2 to the x. And this is 2 to some rational exponent. Square roots are the same thing as a fractional exponent, 1 half, 2 to the 1 half. Now, if their bases are the same, their powers have to be the same. We just solved this x equals 1 half. Well, if we look at this, whenever we see a radical, we should write it as a rational expression in an equation. And let me just do that right here. The square root is a 1 half. 
Now that we wrote it as a rational uh, exponent, notice it's just like this one. Their bases are the same, so it reduces to 1. 1 half is x. And that's what we got here. We got x equals 1 half. Here we have log base x of 4 equals 2 thirds. Well, I'm going to identify my base. Well, it just happens to be the variable. And the power, logarithms are always equal to the power, 2 thirds equals the argument here, which is 4. This is an equation that you should be able to solve. If you recall when we worked with rational exponents and solving quadratics and substitution, um, we had used this tool quite a bit. To get rid of a cubed root, because this 3 is in the denominator, we can cube both sides. If I, or ex excuse me, take the cubed root of both sides. And then we're going to square it, because what's in the numerator is the power. So this is the root, and this is the power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this to the third power to get rid of that cubed root. And what I get is x squared, because 3 times 2 thirds using the power rule is just 2. And 4 to the third is 64. Now what I can do to get rid of this square is to square root it. Take the 1 half power. What I do to one side, I do to the other. The square root of x squared is going to be x. And 64 to the 1 half power, well, that's just saying the square root. And technically, I should have put in a plus or minus, because the 1 half power is a square root, plus or minus 8. The square root of 64 is 8. Now, what do we recall about domain and what the bases can be and range and things like that? We always have to be aware of. The base must always be a positive value not equal to 1. It, since x is my base, it cannot be the negative value. So I can actually ignore that and just say x equals 8 for this particular example. And we can check our work. 8 to the 2 thirds power is 4. So what, what do I raise 8 to to get 4? 2 thirds. That's a true statement. Let's look at this one here. It says log base 2 of 1 eighth equals x. So I can rewrite this as 2 to the x power equals 1 eighth. Well, if we look at this, we say, well, I see a relationship between 8 and 2. 8 is actually 2 cubed. So I'm just going to rewrite this to have the same base. I haven't changed the value of that equation. And, I, and now I look at it and say, well, that 2 is in the denominator. Well, I don't want it in the denominator because this one's not in the denominator. So I'm going to take its reciprocal. By taking its reciprocal, I just change the sign of that exponent. So now we see that they're the same base. So their powers have to be equal. x equals negative 3. I was able to solve this equation. And you might see ones like all of these examples when you go to do the homework. So Definitely practice and stick with it. And hopefully, these examples help you. Now, I have some more examples here. And these all work out to be nice values. I'm going to leave all five of these examples for you to work on. They're very similar to what we saw here. So take your time. Work through these. They're not too bad. Let's review a few rules that we saw as we work through some of those logarithms. We have log of some base of 1 equals 0. So what we're saying here is it doesn't matter what the base is. This is going to have the same property. The reason why the log of 1, regardless of that base, is equal to 0 is for the exponent rule, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So the log of 1 is always 0 because something raised to 0 is always 1. Here, the log of the base b of b equals 1. When their bases are the same, it's always equal to 1, or it reduces to 1. And if we think about that, if the base is this, and it's raised to the first power, it's equal to the argument. The base to the first power equals the argument raised to the power. Well, here I have b with no power. I have to assume. 1. 
It is what it is. That's what the statement is. So what we can essentially think of when we see these bases to be the same is this value reduces to 1. 1 equals 1. Here we have very similar here. The only difference is it's not equal to 1. But we still identify these bases to be the same. If the bases are the same, b to the y equals the argument b to the y. It's the same statement in exponents, except instead of 1, it is some other value. Maybe it's 2 or 3 or 4, like we saw in a previous example. So we can think it reduces to 1 y. One of these powers is this power, because logarithms are equal to powers. I want you to try this one on your own. Notice we have a base of q. And we're taking an argument of q to some power. This one here, I want you to attempt on your own. But I want you to be careful, because it has a radical. Write that as a fractional exponent, and then reduce it just like we did these. All right. So what if it's the other way around? What if we have base where a logarithm is in the power? Well, that same rule still applies. If I have a base, raise the log of that base. If their bases are the same, it reduces to 1. And if you see what we have, the argument equals the argument. When it comes to exponential equations, exponential equations are equal to the argument. If the bases are the same, it reduces to the argument. The argument is the argument. It is what it is. So essentially, let's look at this. Let's simplify 4 raised to log base 4 of 16. I'm going to do this the long and hard way, and then we'll do it the easy way. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do my uh, order of operations, work with exponents first. This is in the exponent position. I'm going to work with it first. So to what power do I raise 4 to get 16? That's what a logarithm is asking me here. Well, I know 4 to the second power is 16. So this value here is equal to 2. 4 squared is 16. So if this is 2, then I have 4 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16. That was the long way, the difficult way. Well, if I use this concept here, if they have the same base, it reduces to one of these arguments. 16 equals 16. That's a true statement. And we've shown that that holds true, just like it did when we had its inverse. So I want you to try this one on your own and this one as well. This one just contains that value of e again. That e is just a natural number. It's, it's the natural number, but it's just a symbol that stands for a number. So you can use the rules on e as well, something we'll explore even more in depthly in the next section. So keep practicing. This has been for watching.